I decided I think the best way to demo this will be to sh put a custom dialog box um, confirmation message on our submit request. So the first thing I'm going to suggest to do before we start um, creating that custom dialog box is to go into our app settings, go into the advanced settings, make sure that your improved app rendering option is turned on. And the other thing that I recommend doing, this will just make uh, creating this dialog box easier, is to it, turn on the enhanced group control. So what this does is it, um, when you group controls together, it will um, create, the, the actual group will have its own X and Y coordinates and will also have its own properties, a lot of its own properties. And it won't just be sort of an amalgamation of all the controls properties that sit within the group. Let's go back to our app. And the first thing I'm going to do now is create a label. I'm going to call this label, call it background. Now this label is going to go right across the screen. You don't want any text in it. Now for the properties of that label, we want to change its fill to be a little bit of a gray color and the opacity because we still want to be able to see what's behind it. Let's maybe go a little bit. Maybe a little bit more than that. Try 50. Yeah, I think somewhere in between 50 and 75 will be good. Alright, let's go with that for the moment. Now, it, one of the things that's key is that this label needs to be sitting above all the other controls on the screen because what you want to happen here is um, you want this label to cover all the other controls when your dialog box appears on, on the actual page or when you want your dial bo dialog box to appear. Now what this will effectively do is it dims the rest of the, the screen and will make your dialog box stand out and will also give focus to your dialog box so when your bo um, message box is being displayed you can't click on any of these other items behind so basically by having this um, label on top of everything you're blocking um, people's access to the form and they must action your dialog box first before continuing on with the rest of the process. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is create a shape and this will be the shape of our message box. We'll just put that somewhere in the middle of the screen. I'm going to make that white. Let's insert another. Because we want this to look just like a dialog box. Like a standard dialog box that we're used to using. Blue is a perfectly okay color. And I just want, the other thing I want on my dialog box is a button. Actually, because this is a save, we would like two buttons. One is going to say OK. One's going to say Cancel. So let's just name these.
and now that we've got a few components here let's group them call this save confirm let's just grab everything inside of the the group minimize this group so it fits perfectly around all of our components inside okay so now we can just move this dialog box as a group around the screen where we want it which is perfect next thing I'd want to do is just add another label because we've got a blue we've got a blue background here let's change the text color to white I'm just gonna say save request because this is our save request and we need a message in our dialog box so let's add one more label let's make this auto height And in here for the text, let's text value. Just gonna say, do you do you really want to save this request? Okay. Another thing we can do here, let's just add a another icon in here. Let's see if there's something suitable. Warning message, there we go. And hey, let's just bold this as well. So by default, we only want it displayed when we hit the submit button. And then the functionality for the submit button, we don't, we don't, we no longer want it to automatically save the record from this button. We actually want it to save from this button. So we need to move that functionality over. So the first thing I'll do is find this button, which is that one there. And let's just copy all of that functionality over. So in here, we're just doing our patch to um, our SharePoint list. And it uh, looks like we're sending an email and we're running a workflow. So this is all um, actions that we set up in, our last, in the last video when we were working on this application. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link on the screen right now for you. Okay. So we've copied that and we just want that on select to be here now. Now, the other thing we need to do is on visible. So when this, when this um, view is on visible, so select the view and on visible, we want to set a variable. And this variable will be, let's just call it var dialog save dialog box visible. Dialog box visible. And we want to set it to false. So that's when that new record screen is visible. So on our group, so select the group and for its for its visible property, we want to just set that to the var save dialog box vis visible. So when that view becomes when the view is visible, 
First thing it does is set that variable to false. And we use the value of that to, to show or hide that dialog box. By, so by default, when that view is opened, we don't want that dialog box shown. We only want it shown when that button is pressed. Now, the other thing we need to do is also set the visibility of this uh, background, the uh, background label as well. We also need to set that in the exact same way as we've set the dialog box because we don't want that shown either by default. Now, the other thing you'll notice, the order here is really critical. The group for that contains the dialog box needs to be sitting right at the top of the view because that's gonna sit above all the other content. Directly underneath that group is our label that shows the, that has the background. So the dialog box group is first containing all the dialog box controls and then underneath that is the label that has the background. Now, with our submit button, We no longer want to do all of this. All we want to do is set the var dialog visible to true. Now let's quickly test that. Here's our new request. When we click that, we now have a dialog box. I think that background is not quite dark enough, so I'm going to go back and darken it. But our cancel is doing nothing at the moment. Let's select cancel and in here, all we want to do, because we want the dialog box to disappear, so we set that, that variable save dialog box visible false again. Okay, so let's just test that. click cancel and it disappears but let me just darken this label as well because I think it is a little bit too bright so let's bring it back up again select the label I'm just going to yeah that's way too much I think around there Pretty good. All right. So all I'm doing there is just changing the alpha on the fill on the on that label. Okay, so if we click cancel, our dialog box disappears. Click submit, click cancel. We can even go one further here and add like a little um, icon to the like a little cancel icon in the top right hand corner here. Unselect of that. We also want to just set the var dialog box to be false. We can cancel our dialog box from there, or we can cancel it from there. And if we put some values in here, do you really want to save this request? Yes. And it goes away and actually saves that request for us. Okay, so that's creating custom dialog boxes in Microsoft Power Apps. I hope you got everything out of this video that you needed. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.